Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and in today's video, I'm going to be taking this simple board and I'm going to turn it into a money making project. This is going to be the perfect video for you if you're going to start taking on client projects for profit or you're going to enter the scene of craft shows. Welcome back and thanks for joining me for another video on the Laser Channel. This project, it's going to be really fun. It's also going to be very quick and easy. And that's because when the client approached me, they already had an idea of the material that they would like their project on. And they already have a selection of the graphics along with the phrase that they would want on here. After listening to my client's needs, the two main things that they want was a deep black engraving on the wood and they didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. And this is where the lumber selection comes into play. In the world of lumber, this type of board with the bark on the back side is called a slab board. This is the second board that comes off of a log, the first one being all bark, this one being half wood, half bark, and the lumber places or tree cutting services, they really have no use for this. You can't make furniture out of this because with the bark, the wood is too unstable and it does have a tendency to cup sometimes. And for firewood, because of any of the sap that might be in the bark yet or near the surface of it, it doesn't make good firewood. So oftentimes when I do a search on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, I can buy a whole trailer load of this between $50 and $80. This costs about maybe 20 cents, if that. Now, one of the things that I do to this to get that nice black engraving that the customer is looking for is I treated this with a borax soap and water treatment. To make that solution, I took two cups of water and about one cup of the borax soap. I mix that up and we'll see that there's still going to be soap at the bottom of that mixing bowl. And that's because we're making a super saturated mixture of this solution, which means at room temperature, that soap will not fully dissolve into the water. So to get around that, we heat the water up a little bit and I should be having a little uh, screen right here demonstrating that. I just used a little campfire stove and I heat the water up a little bit and that will fully dissolve the rest of the soap. I'll then liberally apply that solution to the top surface of the board and even the end grains. And we'll note that it does change the color of the wood a little bit to a little bit of a golden color. Now what this borax solution is going to do is when we engrave, we're not so much engraving into the wood to get the color as we are burning the soap that's saturated into the wood. Once the borax solution is fully dry, air dried, I've tried force drying the borax solution and I just don't get the same consistent results. I found really just letting this air dry overnight yields the most consistent and the best results. Now, of course, that engraving, it's just on the soap and it does have like a char to it. So if I try washing the board or if this board project goes outside and it gets wet, that char, that engraving will start to wash off. So to seal that in, I do have some spray polyurethane. And once I have the engraving complete, I will be putting just a couple light coats on just to make sure that anybody that touches the engraving or if it gets wet, that none of that char comes off and they've got a nice jet black engraving. Before I jump into the computer and show you the graphic that I'll be engraving, I'm going to get the work area set up on the Algo Alpha laser machine. And that's really going to just consist of taking this aluminum backer board from a honeycomb kit I'm going to slide that in here and probably off camera, I'm going to just take some blue painter's tape and make sure that this is taped down to the work surface. That way, as the machine is running, I don't run any risk of this backer plate rotating around. I'm also going to take my work material and place that, of course, in the work area and 
set the focus, and while I still have the machine off, I will square up the work material and I'll show you my quick and easy method for squaring up perfectly work material against the machine. I'm going to align this bottom edge of my work material against this frame member. And for this, I'm going to slide the frame member forward and I'm going to take a board that I know is flat and straight and I'm going to place it up against this rail and slide that board down until it reaches the table surface. And then I can take my work material behind there and just make sure that it has got an even gap or pushed all the way up against the board. And now when I remove the board out of the way, I know that the work material is perfectly aligned to the frame of the machine. To ensure that the work material doesn't move around during the engraving time, I can take some just common blue painter's tape and place a piece on each end of the work material. I finished setting up the machine off camera by connecting power up to it. The included air assist kit that does have a variable speed air pump. So when I am doing the engraving, I am going to turn down the airflow from here down to about 20 or 30%. I want some airflow past the nozzle, but not so much that I start to blow some of that engraving chart to the surrounding area. The other thing I did off camera is I found some settings that are perfect for my machine setup and the work material that I have that's treated with that Borax solution. I ended up doing two test engravings here. The one on my side here, I started out with very wide settings. And by that I mean, I went from a power level of 60% uh, to 100% and a speed of 100 millimeters per second, all the way up to 175 millimeters per second. The machine will go faster than that, but that's all I wanna run for this project. Based off that first test grid, I then fine tuned my settings a little bit more in a second grid. And this one, I ran the power level from 10% up to 50%. And then again, the speed is still at 100 to 175 millimeters per second. Because this is a project that I'm doing for money, I want to have the machine run very quickly at the lowest power level. I don't want this engraving to take all afternoon. I've got other things I'd like to do. So when we jump into Lightburn here, let's take a look at the graphic that I have loaded in. And here we've got Kotke Lumber Company, established in 1980. Wood is life, the rest is just details. So this is what the client wanted. This is how they approved the layout. I added in the little chainsaws on the side here. And these I sourced from Adobe software. I run Adobe software when I edit all of my photos and the video that you're watching and included with that subscription, I do have access to free licensed images that I can use commercially. So it's perfectly legal for me to use these images, engrave them, and then sell that product. When I read the fine details of that license, I just can't sell the image itself in a digital form, but I can print it out and do different things with it exactly like this. If you don't have access to Adobe software for images, my other favorite go-to place is pixabay.com. Just make sure that you read the licensing on it, that you're using it correctly, whether it's for personal use or for commercial use, for taking projects to an art show, craft show, or doing commission work, just like the one that I'm demonstrating here. I'm gonna show you the settings that I'm using for my engraving based off of the material test that I just showed you a minute ago. And I go up here and I double click on this line, we're going to see that I settled in on a speed of 175 millimeters per second at a power level of 60%. And my lines per inch, I typed in 300, but with the step count of how the machine works, it twitches that number just a little bit. And that's going to be normal on basically every laser machine on the market today. Just below the engraving layer, I have a tool layer. This is the orange T1 layer. 
I drew out a rectangle here, and this rectangle represents the size of the material I have placed in the work area. This is something I like to do because in Lightburn software, this is a very clear representation of the work material that I have and how the graphic is laid out within that work material. The last thing that I'd like to share with you before I put the exhaust hood over the machine is to show you this little, I call it the TV. This is the preview button. When I click on that, that'll show me how long this is going to take. And this engraving will take 26 minutes long. One of the things that I really like about the Elgo laser, I mean, there's a lot of them, but this is just one of them is it does match up to this estimated time. So it really will take 26 minutes and change to do this. Some of the other machines on the market, they will run over by 25%. And I've got machines that will actually go over by 50 to 75%. So this is one of the important things to know when you're doing projects for profit is how many of these can you get done in a certain time span? And that helps you calculate the pricing on your projects. So it's good to know that you have a machine that matches up what Lightburn predicts. With that, I'll get the rest of the machine, the exhaust hood set up, and we'll check out a nice engraving. The engraving's complete, and I'm gonna take my first look at this, and this looks absolutely awesome. Crisp, clean detail. I'll show you a close-up before I take this outside to spray some of that polyurethane on this nice project. The engraving turned out perfectly. I've got all this clean, crisp detail everywhere, and that engraving is absolutely jet black thanks to that borax solution that I applied before doing this project. polyurethane is dry on the front and on the back. Yep, I sprayed both sides. I just like to have that nice sheen of that polyurethane glimmer on it. It's just a really great way to finish out a project for a client or for your art show, craft show projects. Now this is just one example that you can do. And this is using, of course, that slab wood. While I was at that place where I picked this up for basically next to nothing, I also talked to them about getting some of the boards a little bit deeper into the log. And because these boards, they're not kiln dried, they're not further processed, they're still incredibly inexpensive. And the board thickness, it's every bit of an inch thick, if not a little bit more. And using the same borax method of treating the wood before engraving it, again, I get this beautiful black engraving. I also did one on the back side and attached a rope to it for a nice wall hanging. So just some neat stuff that I made just to kind of showcase if you're thinking about starting a business or entering art shows and craft shows, this is a great method to get introduced into that. And because the material costs are pretty low and these really do stand out, especially when you put a nice coating of polyurethane or varnish over the top. There's just something about going into a booth at a craft show, at an art show, and just smelling the different wood smells and the finishes on the wood. It kind of adds to the ambience of your customers and your clients coming into your area to purchase an item from you. Thanks for watching the video. I hope that you learned something. If you did, if you're entertained by this video, please consider giving the video a like, 
subscribe to the channel or ring that notification bell. It helps the channel out, but even more so, it's a great way to connect content like this with great viewers like you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.